What's up, y'all? My name is Troy, and today we're going to talk about the Sensu Agent. In this lesson, we will install and configure the Sensu Agent and discuss how events and other status are communicated at the back end. This lesson is intended for operators of Sensu and assumes you have already set up a local workshop environment. If you still need to do that, go check out Lesson 2 and get your environment configured. As always, this entire lesson, including code samples, is available on GitHub as part of the Sensu Workshop. Links are in the description. An agent is a lightweight observability client that runs on your infrastructure. The agent generates the events which are processed by the observability pipeline. It does this by executing requested service checks and then collects the results and sends them to the backend as events. We'll talk more about those service checks in the next lesson, but first we will want to get familiar with the Sensu agent itself. The agent is a statically compiled binary typically installed via package management or Docker containers. Packages are available as Docker images, Debian packages for Ubuntu and Debian, RPM packages for RHEL and CentOS, and chocolatey packages for Windows, and gzip tarballs for macOS, FreeBSD, and other Linux distributions. Agents connect to the backend over a persistent WebSocket connection. The agents use this connection to receive check execution requests from the backend and send the resulting events to be processed by the pipeline. For optimal network throughput, agents will attempt to negotiate the use of protobuf serialization when communicating with a backend that supports it, but by default, communication is in plain text. Authentication is required for an agent to connect to the backend over WebSockets. The agent supports basic authentication using usernames and passwords, or MTLS authentication. Here's the situation. You have a server, container, connected device, or service that you want to manage with your existing Sensu backend infrastructure. The solution is to install a Sensu agent. The agent runs as a separate process that observes your system. It can run directly on the system you are observing or anywhere on the network. Once it's installed, you can update its configuration and behavior dynamically without the need to redeploy. Before we start, let's make sure we have the necessary environment variables set up. The ones we will need for this exercise are Sensu version, Sensu build, Sensu backend URL, Sensu namespace, Sensu user, and Sensu password. If any are missing, review the environment setup from the lesson titled Using the Sensu of CLI. Okay, everything looks good. In this lesson, we are going to download and install the Sensu agent directly onto our laptop. We'll use basic shell commands like curl on Mac and Linux or the invoke web request PowerShell commandlet on Windows. The agent is distributed as pre-compiled platform-specific binaries via Sensu's S3 repository. I'm using a Mac, so I'll need to download the Sensu agent for macOS. So let's copy and paste those instructions from the online workshop resources. If you are following along using a different host OS, you'll need to copy the appropriate command for the OS you're using. This curl command selects the right binary based on the environment variables we just looked at. All right, let's run that. Cool, so now that we've downloaded the agent, we'll need to extract the archive and move it to an appropriate location on disk and also do some cleanup. That's what these commands do. Let's copy and paste those from the online workshop resources. All right. Now that we have the agent installed, the next step is to start the Sensu agent. Let's copy the start command for our platform from the online resources, in this case, macOS. The Sensu agent start command uses several command line parameters. I don't want to get too bogged down in the details of this configuration right now. There are a lot of agent configuration options available. These specific parameters are tuned for the workshop environment. The one option I'll call out here is the subscriptions option. This list describes the types of things that this agent will pay attention to, including requests from the backend to run specific checks. 
For our purposes in the workshop, we'll be listening to the system subscription for our platform, in this case, system slash macOS, and to the workshop subscription. We'll talk more about subscriptions in a later lesson. Okay, let's run that command and start the agent. This is going to keep running indefinitely, so let's open another terminal so we can verify the agent is running using sense of cuddle. Great, the Sensu backend is already seeing this agent and has automatically created an entity resource corresponding to the agent. That's awesome. Running the agent entirely using command line options is admittedly a bit of a special case. Usually you'll run the Sensu agent with just a few command line options and place most of your agent configuration into a config file. We'll cover that in the next exercise. The agent has a wide variety of parameters but they fall roughly into two categories, options that control the behavior of the agent, such as TLS certificates, authentication, and subscriptions, and options to configure aspects of the entity representation, such as labels and annotations. For a full list of available configuration options, use the dash dash help option. The agent can be configured via command line options, YAML config file, or environment variables. If a configuration value is set in multiple places, it will be overridden with the following priority. Command line options take the highest priority, and then environment variables, next config files, and finally, if none of those are available, the default value is used. Let's try configuring the agent using a config file instead of a command line option. Here's the scenario. You have an agent running on a remote node. It's controlled by the init system on that node and has all the configuration options in the init script. You want to customize the agent's metadata, but you don't want to disrupt the init script with every metadata change. The solution is to start the agent using the config file option and then use that config file for agent metadata instead of having that in the init script as command line options. So let's stop the agent and add a configuration file. Ready? Let's do it. First, let's stop the agent. If the agent we started in the last exercise is still running, you can stop the agent by pressing Control-C in your terminal. Since agent configuration is only loaded at start time, the agent must be restarted to update the configuration. Next, let's add a YAML configuration file. At minimum, the agent requires a backend WebSocket URL and one or more subscriptions. We'll also add some agent metadata in the form of labels and annotations. Let's start by creating an agent.yaml file in the recommended location for the workshop host. Since I'm on macOS, I'll use opt slash sensu slash agent.yaml. If you're on another host OS, you can grab the recommended location from the lesson resources. Okay, let's copy and paste the example contents from the lesson plan into this file location. Now we can restart the agent, this time using a mix of environment variables, command line options, and our configuration file. Notice that we moved the name, backend URL, and deregister configuration options into agent.yaml file, and we set the sensu subscriptions environment variable in place of the command line subscriptions argument. But how is namespace being set now that we are no longer using the command line option? The agent is automatically reading the value of sensu namespace from the environment variable. Let's verify that the agent exists in the default namespace and that the new metadata exists using the sensu cuddle entity info command. Great, the entity representation of the agent matches our configuration changes. This is a good place to stop. Let's wrap up this lesson with some discussion. In this lesson, we explored installing and configuring the agent, and you learned how it communicates and authenticates to the backend. In the first exercise, we passed all the agent configuration 
via command line options to the Sensu agent start command. In the second exercise, we moved some configuration to a config file, and the other configuration went into environment variables. The ability to configure the agent using multiple methods is very useful in complex environments that may have a mix of servers, compute instances, and containers. However, in practice, you may find that just one method is best suited for your environment. For example, on Kubernetes or other container-based environments, it may be easiest to manage all configuration via environment variables. There are a lot of configuration options and a lot of different ways to express them, but one nice thing is that all of the options use consistent naming regardless of the way that they are set, differing only in format. For example, let's look at the namespace backend URL and log level configuration options in each of the supported formats. Configuration options as command line arguments are always lowercase, and multi-word command line arguments use dashes between the words. For arguments that take a list of values, separate the values with commas and do not include any spaces. YAML configuration has similar parameter naming to command line arguments, and configuration follows normal YAML convention for lists. The environment variable form is a little different. The variable names are fully uppercased and they are prefixed with sensu underscore. Instead of dashes, when there are multiple words in the name, they are separated by underscores. Values must be closed inside of quotes to indicate strings, and list values are separated by spaces within the quotes. One last important note about agents. Sensu uses a heartbeat mechanism called keepalives to monitor agent connectivity. Under the hood, a keep alive is just another event that the agent publishes at a regular interval set by the keep alive interval configuration options. The keep alive event contains the agent configuration and event properties. If an entity fails to report a keep alive event within the time frame specified by the keep alive warning timeout and keep alive critical timeout thresholds, a warning or critical event is produced on behalf of the agent. Keep alive monitoring can be disabled using the deregister true flag, which prompts the backend to remove agent entities that have stopped generating keep alive events. Okay, that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to run service checks on these agents. The magic is all in the agent's subscriptions. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or stop by our discourse forums to chat about all things Sensu. See you in the next video.